Hi guys, it's Early here. Welcome back to another show of Keto in the Kitchen with Jasmine. The reason I'm coming to you guys so early this morning is because we are making pumpkin pie. We're making regular pumpkin pie and we're also making keto pumpkin pie. And for the keto pumpkin pie, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be making my own keto crust with that. I came up with my own recipe. In addition to that, I have two large pumpkins and what I'm going to do is I'm going to boil each pumpkin in a large pot so that it's easier for me to scrape out the um, pumpkin insides. And also we're going to make pumpkin seeds from the seeds that we're acquiring. So it's going to be spicy pumpkin seeds. They're going to be really yummy. Um, so I'll show you that process as we're going along. So what I've done is I boiled both of my pumpkins to make it easier for cutting into because I always have a rough time with that. And in addition to that, I, I sliced open the first pumpkin. I dug out all of its insides and its seeds and I put it into a glass baking dish each half in the oven on 350 degrees and I'll be baking that for one hour. The second pumpkin is actually in my pot and it's boiling on the stove and then once that's done and it's easier to cut open and scoop out the insides, I'll pull it out, let it cool down, I'll chop it in half, I'll pull out its seeds and some of its insides and then I'll slice and then what I'll also do is I will cook that and bake that in the oven for about one hour on 350 degrees so that I can make my pumpkin pies. So what I've done is I've taken the last pumpkin out of the water since I ended up boiling one of them. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all the meat out of the pumpkins and I'll take video of everything before I do it and then I'll show you the after uh, effects of it. And I'm going to put it in a large bowl and I'm going to reserve it until tomorrow in the fridge. Also, I took the pumpkin seeds out. I'm going to fill them with, with cold water and I'm going to let them soak overnight. And then what I'm going to do is remove them from the water and get rid of all the other debris. And then I'm going to roast them in my oven until they're baked and they're going to come out as spicy roasted pumpkin seeds. Yum, yum. Okay, so I have a bag of chicken scraps from the pumpkin runs and other things that I'm actually going to take out to my chickens because the pumpkin rinds are cooked so they're soft and the chickens can eat those and they're actually really good for their diet. So I don't want anything to go to waste and I'm going to feed it to my chickens. So I don't think I've ever made pumpkin pie making the filling myself before as far as um, cooking the pumpkin and getting all of its innards out and processing it. I think I just did it from a can. So this is a different experience for me. It's a lot of work. I didn't realize how much work it is, but I'm sure it's going to be very, very rewarding. And I ha really have to thank Jen for giving me two nice sized pumpkins to make pumpkin pie with. And so I'm returning the favor by making her and her family a nice sized pumpkin pie. And I'm making myself a pumpkin pie also. And then if I have leftovers, well, then I'll just make another pumpkin pie and hand it out in the neighborhood. Hi guys, it's morning here again. It's the second day or day two of making pumpkin pie. And I just wanted to mention pumpkin pie or pumpkin, I should say, is really, really, really good for your body, especially when you're a diabetic. There's a lot of articles out there that will explain the benefits, so I'm not gonna go through the benefits. Um, but what I'm going to start on this morning is I'm actually going to start on showing you how to puree pumpkin to get it ready for your pumpkin pie. And basically what you're going to do, you might have to do this in batches depending on the size of your food processor, but you're going to take pumpkin and you're going to puree it in your food processor. If you find that pureeing it in your food processor that it's just too thick, all you have to do is add a couple of tablespoons of water 
until it gets to the consistency of where you want it to be. So I'm going to show you that process. And then as we go throughout the day, we'll be doing um, baking and instructions on everything that you need to do to make homemade pumpkin pie. Tomorrow's recipe will be homemade keto pumpkin pie with a keto crust. And I just wanted to mention that I'm putting a bowl of water next to my food processor so I can just spoon in a couple of tablespoons of water should I need it as we're going through the puree process. Another thing I wanted to mention, if at the end of each batch of your puree process, depending on how large your food processor is, if you need to do it in batches or you don't, what you can do if it becomes too liquidy is you can take a bowl and you can put a strainer over top of the bowl and you can press the pumpkin puree into the strainer so that all the liquid comes out so it's going to be the perfect consistency for your pumpkin pie. Another thing I'm going to have to do is I pulled out a large mixing bowl and because my food processor is smaller, I'm going to have to process my um, pumpkin in batches and I'll put it all in this bowl so that I can start making my pumpkin pie. So that's how my first batch of pumpkin puree came out and it looks really good. Like I said, one tablespoon each just to get the desired thickness. If you overwater it, that's all right. Just stick it in a strainer over a bowl to get rid of the excess water. So that's a consistency you want it to look like, and I hate to use this analogy, but it looks a bit like baby food. So if it's a sm smooth uh, texture, that's exactly what you want is a smooth and creamy texture. Okay, so there's my pumpkin pie pureed, and what we're going to move on to next is going to be the pumpkin seeds. All right, guys, I changed my mind. Instead of doing the um, pumpkin seeds right now, I'm actually going to make the condensed milk, and so that's a process I'm going to show you right now. So since this recipe is not keto, what we're going to do is take two cups of plain yogurt and we're going to let it simmer until or reduce down till about half. And when it is, we're going to add one cup of white sugar to it because this isn't going into a keto recipe. This is just going into a regular recipe for my neighbors. And to that mixture, we're also going to add salt. And I'll explain the process as we're going along. And what you're going to do is you're just going to make sure that the recipe or that the condensed milk has cooled down enough to pour into your large mixing bowl. So you want it cool, you don't want it warm or anything like that. And I've decided for um, the condensed milk, I'm also going to add two tablespoons of unsalted butter, but I am going to wait until halfway through the process to add it with the sugar and everything like that. So I'll show you that in a minute. All right, I took some video of the condensed milk that's in the pot and I wanted you to see what it looks like. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to prep our pumpkin seeds that have been sitting overnight. What I'm going to do is I've taken out a strainer and I'm going to dump the pumpkin seeds inside of the strainer and I'm going to pick off all of the parts, so the pumpkin parts that I don't want to bake and discard those and then I'm going to prepare the rest of the pumpkin seeds. So here's a shot of what the pumpkin seeds look like. So I cleaned my pumpkin seeds and one thing I did want to mention is I probably will never soak those in cold water again overnight and the reason for that is is because they started germinating and while that is perfect for your garden so you can grow pumpkin seeds or pumpkins from the pumpkin seeds it's not really good for eating. So what I'm going to do is not do that again. 
and I'm going to start on the recipe. But first, I'm going to dry all my pumpkin seeds on a plate between a long towel so I can fold it over and just allow it to dry for a little while. And so my pumpkin seeds are drying between the folds of this towel and they will until it's completely dry and then I'll make my recipe. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to work on the pumpkin pie filling. For this, what I did is I grabbed a large bowl. The condensed milk is cooled down. I'm going to add that to the mixing bowl. And I also have my mixer out. So we're adding for the first ingredients, one and three quarters cups of condensed milk. So that's almost two cups, just a little under. So it's a quarter under. The next thing we're going to do is grab a pot and we're going to add all of our spices to it except for the salt. So we're going to add all of the spices to it into the pot in a dry pot on medium high heat and we're going to dry cook it just for a few minutes, just a little bit of time, maybe not even a few minutes, maybe a few seconds um, so that it'll bring out the flavors of the spices. So the first ingredients that we're adding to the pot is one half teaspoon each of ginger pepper, cinnamon, nutmeg, and cloves. The next two ingredients are 1 8 teaspoon each of cardamom and allspice. Now just go ahead and turn your burner on to medium high and quickly cook those and turn it off and then you can add it to your mixing bowl once it's cool. And as you can see, it's now in the mixing bowl. Now add one teaspoon of salt to your mixing bowl. And what the salt is going to do is it's really going to bring out the sweetness of your pumpkin pie and also the flavors of the other spices. Now add two cups of pumpkin pie filling. And now add your extracts. Now we're adding one half cup of butter, which is eight tablespoons of unsalted butter that we're adding to our pie filling. Next, we're going to be adding three farm fresh eggs to our mixing bowl. Now we're adding one half cup each of brown sugar and white sugar to the mixing bowl. And I wanted to mention that if you don't have brown sugar, you can actually make your own. There are a lot of good recipes out there that show you how to use molasses with white sugar in order to make brown sugar. Um, because I'm keto, I'm not actually going to go into that. I might at a later date, but there are a, good, a lot of good recipes out there that you can use. Now we're going to mix all of our ingredients in the mixing bowl, and then we're going to add our final ingredient. So because I'm not excellent at baking, I purchased a couple of pie shells, and what I'm going to do now is take a mixed egg, and with this brush, I'm going to um, brush the mixed egg over the pie crust, and then I'm going to put it in my oven, which is already preheated to 350 degrees, and I'm going to let it brown for approximately 10 minutes. It might be more or less depending on your oven and also your elevation. And now that's what it looks like on the baking sheet. So this is what my pie shells look like. And what I'm going to do is let those cool down before I add the pie filling to them. Okay, so my pie crusts are now cool. And what I'm going to do is pour in the pie filling. Okay, so I put my pies in the oven for um, basically about an hour. Just check it as it's going along just to make sure um, that if it needs more time, you can add it. If it doesn't, you can backtrack on it. Also, I did want to say that because this is from scratch, 
this pumpkin is, and um, it is pumpkin puree. The kind of pumpkin that you find in a can is actually mixed with butternut squash, and that that is what gives it more of a brownish color, like an orange brownish color. But because this is so pure, it's not like that at all. It's a different color. So I brought my pies out of the oven with about three minutes left. I'm going to check it, and I'll show you some video on it. And if it's not finished, I'm going to stick it back in the oven for a little bit longer. So my pies still need a little bit longer to bake, and what I've done is I've taken some tin foil and I lined the crust with it so it doesn't get too brown. And I took, I did take video of it, and I did show you that. Hi guys. So yesterday, what we made was regular pumpkin pie, and what we're going to make now is keto pumpkin pie. What we're going to do is we're going to start with making the keto pie crust. So what I've done is I've gotten out a large mixing bowl and I'm going to add one cup of almond flour to it. The next thing we're going to add is one half cup of coconut flour, one half teaspoon of xanthan gum, one half teaspoon of sea salt, one half teaspoon of cinnamon toasted. One half cup of stevia. Then what we're going to do is mix it up and add the other ingredients. So what we're going to do now is we're going to melt half of a jar of peanut butter and then one half cup of coconut oil. And this is the size that I'm referring to, so it's approximately one half cup of peanut butter that you're going to melt in the pan with coconut oil. And what you're going to do is turn your burner onto medium low and allow those flavors to blend together. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the pistachios. I'm going to take approximately one cup. I'm going to shell them, and then I'm going to put them in my food processor and I'm going to blend it up. So the peanut butter and the coconut oil has actually melted down. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just, I turned off my burner. I'm going to let it cool down. And then I'm going to add it to my mixing bowl with the dry ingredients. Okay, so here's my bowl of pistachios. I'll take video of it. And what I'm going to do is just put that in the food processor and process about one cup of it and then add it to my mixing bowl. In addition, before I do that, I'm actually going to take the coconut oil and the natural peanut butter since it's cooled down and add it to my mixing bowl and mix it up. And then I'll process the pistachios and add those. The next thing we're going to add is one half teaspoon each of orange and almond extract. Now we're going to add seven tablespoons of butter, and you just want to make sure that's softened. Now add four ounces of softened cream cheese. Now we're going to add in one egg, two teaspoons of apple cider vinegar, and then two tablespoons of sugar-free syrup, and then you're just going to mix it. And then what you're going to do is you're gonna take your filling and you're going to put it in your glass baking dish and try your best, like I did, to make a pie crust. And I showed you video on that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in the fridge for an hour so that it sets and that all the flavors have a chance to blend together. And this is before I actually bake it because I've decided I'm going to bake it for maybe 10 to 20 minutes, depending on how it looks. So 
So now we are on to making the keto pie filling. And for that, what we're going to do is we're going to add all of the spices to a pot on medium high for just a little bit, just to warm it up and bring out the flavor of the spices with the exception of the salt. We're not going to add the salt to it, just the regular spices. And we're gonna go through that now. So the first ingredient we're going to add is one half teaspoon of ginger. The next ingredient is one half teaspoon of pepper. Now it's one half teaspoon of cinnamon, one half teaspoon of nutmeg, one half teaspoon of cloves, one eighth teaspoon of allspice, one eighth teaspoon of cardamom. Then heat up your pot or your pan, give it a stir and add your spices to your bowl. You can let it cool down a little bit first before you do. You just wanna bring out the flavors. Okay, so what I've done is I've added it to my bowl. And what we're going to do now is we're going to make the keto condensed milk. And how we're going to do that is we're going to take two cups of yogurt, so maybe either one cup of yogurt, one cup of sour cream, you can do it that way, two cups of sour cream or two cups of milk, however you want, or not two cups of milk, um, two cups of yogurt, however you want to do it. And then you're going to let it cook down and half, so halfway through it, when you let it cook halfway down, you're going to add one half cup of stevia and one half cup of sugar-free syrup, a dash of salt and two tablespoons of butter. And you're just going to go ahead and cook that on medium low until it's all blended together. While you're waiting for your condensed milk to um, cook down and you're gonna add your rest of your ingredients, what you can do is you can actually add your two cups of pie filling to your mixing bowl. Now you can go ahead and mix your pie filling with your spices. Now add one teaspoon of sea salt, one teaspoon of vanilla extract, one half teaspoon of butter extract, add eight tablespoons of unsalted butter, which is one half cup. And I just made sure that my butter was softened. Now add three farm fresh eggs, Make sure that you're checking on your condensed milk or your yogurt and sour cream in this case as you're going along just to watch it got, get reduced down to about halfway. So then you can start adding your sugars, which is your stevia, sugar-free, and also your sugar-free syrup. Okay, so it looks like my mixture is uh, reduced down enough. I'm going to go ahead and add one half cup of stevia and one half cup of sugar-free maple syrup. Then just give it a stir, add a dash of salt and two tablespoons of unsalted butter. And then just give it a stir and allow those flavors to blend together and allow that butter to melt. Mm -mm. Okay, so the butter has melted in the pot. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn the burner off and I'm going to allow the condensed milk to just cool down before I add it to my mixing bowl. What we're going to do now is add the stevia and also the um, sugar-free maple syrup to the mixing bowl. I accidentally already added the stevia, so we're just gonna add the sugar-free maple syrup. But if you haven't added um, your sugars yet or sugar-free sugars yet, now is the time to do it. Um, so we're going to go ahead and take care of the sugar-free maple syrup. And then blend that up. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add about two tablespoons of cornstarch. Okay, so the sweetened condensed milk is now cooled down enough and you can add it to your mixing bowl. 
And I just added one more tablespoon of cornstarch and that's how my batter looks. Now we're on to the spicy pumpkin seeds. And for that, what I have is I had my pumpkin seeds drying in a towel. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put these in a bowl. And that's video on what my pumpkin seeds look like inside of the mixing bowl. Now what we're going to do is we're gonna grab a bowl and we're going to add three tablespoons of olive oil. The next ingredient you're going to add to the bowl is one teaspoon of low sodium soy sauce. And now one teaspoon of sriracha and one half teaspoon each of smoked paprika and cumin. One teaspoon each of garlic powder, onion powder, and ground mustard. One tablespoon of chili powder. Two tablespoons of nutritional yeast. and then three tablespoons of pickle juice. Whisk it up and then pour it over your pumpkin seeds. And what I decided to do was add just enough water so I can thin it out and so that it'll pour instead of glop. Now what we're going to do is just let it sit inside of that marinade for a little bit. We're going to do that while the pumpkin pie bakes. So I'm gonna pour the filling into the uh, pumpkin pie shell, and then I'm going to bake it in the oven for approximately an hour. I'll pull it out and see if it needs more time after that. Okay, so my keto pie has finished baking. The crust is a little dark. Um, and now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put my pumpkin seeds in the oven on 350 and bake them until they're done cooking. Okay, so the pumpkin seeds are taking a lot longer than expected. I turned the heat down to 300 degrees and I'm just going to go ahead and bake it until they're done. It could take an hour, I'm not sure. Anyway, that concludes our show today of Keto in the Kitchen with Jasmine. I hope all of you have enjoyed the show. Have a good one, guys. Until next time.